Saint-Amand, as the French call it. I'm your host, a woman driver. If you are watching this video or have happened upon my channel, you're in for old cars and cool liveries and subpar driving. So if that's kind of what you're into, then you're in the right spot. To be honest, this channel is really just for me. I just wanted a place to store all my replays so I could go back and watch my races and figure out where I was slow and where I could get faster. Um, and I can't store them all on my PlayStation, so I figured I would store them on YouTube and Twitch for free. So that seemed like a better idea than buying extra storage space for my PlayStation. So here we are. If you like the content, cool. If not, no worries. It was really all for me anyhow. Uh, I do play on VR, which is pretty much the most fun when it comes to racing simulators coming from San Francisco Rush from Nintendo 64 to this and pretty much not racing at all on video games for the last 15, 15 years. This has been quite the experience for me. Highly recommend the VR2 headset for Gran Turismo. I also bought one of those cool little cockpit things. I spent a lot of time racing on controller. And finally realized it'd be way more fun to buy a cockpit, so I bought the Next Level Racing FGT cockpit. Obviously not the greatest cockpit in the world. But, great value for the price. Seat's comfortable. Not incredibly terrible to put together. Harder than I anticipated though, to be honest. Uh, my buddy had a similar experience with his cockpit. I don't can't remember what he bought, but... Yeah, they're harder, harder to put together than anticipated. Overboard with the wheels and pedals. Got the Fanatec GTDD Pro with the little boost kit, I think they call it, for the 8 newton meters of force on the wheel instead of 5. Highly recommend that. Very fun. Uh, super solid setup. No complaints with the wheel. Or the pedals. I did buy the upgraded load cell brake pedal, which that I have been extremely impressed with. A, geez, I think it's a 45 newton meter brake pedal, not 60, 60 newton meter. I can't remember. Anyhow, the load cell kit gives you very good feel. A lot of. Uh, a lot of room and far weight that you can put on the pedal to adjust your braking, which is always good. Yeah, it takes a little bit of force, but I do play in socks. It's not, it's not like it's so hard to play or so hard to push on that you can't just play in socks. So no need, no need to go buy racing shoes. Uh, the other thing that I was probably most happy about is the actual Fanatec shifter. Pretty sure they only have one uh, H pattern or sequential shifter. It is way more fun than freaking flappy paddles. Paddle shifters are cool. They're faster. They're better by all means. 
but just not as much fun when you're in a car like this. Which you can see has the H pattern. And you can almost just imagine you're in the car when you move your hand and the little hand over there on the screen moves almost at the same time. Yeah, that is it. That's the setup. Like I said, mostly, mostly old cars. It's just something about them. Uh, as far as assists, if you can't tell from the driving, and drive with no assists at all. I'm not good at it. I will spin out on a regular basis, especially in the rain. But it is a load of fun. I did lose about 10 to 20 seconds a lap when I went from controller with assist to steering wheel and shifter with no assist. So that was cool to spend all that money and actually be slower. It is way more fun. I am not here for lap times, that's for sure. If I was, I'd be very frustrated at this point. As far as the car, this is the uh, Mark IV. A fantastic car for learning heel toe braking H pattern shifting because you only have four gears, which is preferable. First got on here, my uh, I have a Honda RA272 F1 racer. I thought it was super fun. I was getting pretty fast at that on controller. Jumped on here and H pattern shifter on a six speed with that car was too challenging, to be honest. I mean I can do it, but um, just tons of mistakes, can't get into a rhythm. This car, pretty mild, good under braking. I'd say it's worth the money. I have noticed the Porsche curves, these curves right here, are easier. It's probably the one part of the track for me that's easier with the wheel and pedals than a controller with assist. The assist just really can't. I, I can never find the balance of a car with the controller on those. Oh, hey, here we go. Oh, right. And this is why I drive with the HUD. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right. Oh, wets or intermediates? Wets or intermediates? Wets. Oh, uh, yeah. There's the wets. guys on slicks drive worse than I do. Oh look, yeah, it is getting wet. 
Oh, here. There we go. Alright. So as far as tracks, I pretty much race Le Mans. Most of my videos will be Lama. I see about doing some car reviews. Maybe I'll start one now on the Mark IV. All on Lama because honestly, I need the money. Oh, here. oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, oh yeah. These guys. Yeah. Driving in Oregon on the freeway. Uh, this car on the controller was not my favorite car, to be honest. Uh, I've raced automatic. I like the Ferrari 330 better. Definitely like the Honda RA272 better. But, getting onto a wheel and pedal setup, four speed was helpful. Taking off the assist, it's a very stable car. Oh, more stable than him. Yeah, there you go. I'm really sure seeing that one coming. Yep, sub hard driving, guys. That's what you're here for. Uh, yep, stable car. It does hydroplane, though. As I'm on wet side, should easily be good. Oh, Lord, look at him go. Wow. Whoa. Oh dear! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> oh, oh God! He's he, oh oh dear! Yeah, he's he's just oh and here I go. Yep, there we go. There we go. Yep. Let's go to that bad boy. Reverse on here. Perfect. I should have been watching so much. Huh? Really rubbernecking there, and I I don't know how to start my car by the way. I, I haven't figured that one out. Whenever I kill it, it just kind of waits for a while and starts on its own. Alright, so, uh, <clears throat> minor setback, but was pretty great. Uh, yeah, so, good car. Oh, here, look at this guy go. Oh, oh my. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh. Yeah, not full throttle through there. Yeah, they definitely should have hit it last lap. Um, uh, the thing I do not like about this track, to go back to the track, is the freaking weather. It's so hard to, uh... <clears throat> well, I mean, I could race this track for not any money. And then I could set, set the weather to whatever I wanted, but... Hard to race consistently when the weather does that. Which I guess is realistic, but if you do the math on how fast those clouds move, they move about 1,500 miles an hour. Meaning the weather changes a bit more quickly than perhaps you would expect. But regardless, the car, uh, good handling. I don't know how fast it goes anymore. I used to know back when I raced with the HUD and not in VR. It's fast. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm good. Hey, look, let's pull over here, have a beer. Cool. Back looks good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there. Anyhow, now you see how easy it is to make money in this game. If you just get in this car and drive for 30 minutes, you will win because I can do it. And I race terribly most of the time. No, come on, jeez, jeez. Yeah, good times. 
Stop car driving in cool cars. That's the name of this channel. The thing I love about this wheel is how you can tell when the front end's just floating like that. It has up to 8 newton meters. But in the rain, it almost feels like you're driving a normal car on snow. And then when you hydroplane, it feels like you're driving a normal car on ice. There's just no resistance in the wheel. You can't go. Oh, come on. Jeez. They will snap on you. Uh, Off-roading capabilities of the Mark IV, not super great. Do not recommend as a rally, rally car. Not really a sport thing. Uh, brakes are good. Acceleration is very good. Fun car to drive. Lots of cool liveries available for it. Suit's cool too. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, floaty. Just the yeah. That, the wheel feels exactly like it looks. Definitely, you're into racing. Get a wheel. You don't have to go all the way up here. Uh, the Fanatec DD Pro GT. You can buy a Logitech. I think the 923 is what my buddy has. Totally fine wheel. I'm actually faster with that wheel with some assists on than I am with this with no assist. If you do get this wheel, I do recommend you get a cockpit. They say you can mount it to a desk. I'm fairly certain that you would move the desk sometimes. It can get violent. Tons of reviews on all the stuff I have, so if you want actual reviews, check out those things. If you want actual good channels, uh, Super GT, great channel. Uh, the Key, I think it says the Key 25. I've watched him a lot too, he's fantastic. Uh, there's another guy, Moradness, I think is his name on Twitch. Uh, actual GT racer. He's got just an amazing setup. So. All good channels that I like to watch, probably more than watching my own for sure. I imagine it'll be the same for you. But none of them drive old cars like this. And that's why I decided I would do my own thing. And there's something soothing about these cars. It's so analog. Minus the weather map, which you absolutely have to have. You, you can't even. If the weather comes at the wrong time, even with the map, it can catch you out here. Just stuck going nowhere on slicks. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, wheel spin. Let's see, three laps left. Might have stopped again. We'll see how it goes. Probably just go into fuel save mode and milk it out. We'll see. The weird thing about these simulator wheels, which I I don't understand them. Having never driven a race car, I don't know if that's how it goes, but you literally can't let go of the wheel. Like, not even in a straight line. It just starts to shake. And I. It would blow my mind if that's how race cars were. Like, if you just went in a straight line and let go of the wheel, starts to do that. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Anyhow, you can't imagine that's real. But, as far as I know, they all do it. And it just it makes it hard to race and do anything at the same time, have a beverage, 
adjust your headset. Look at this rain. See, I will not be giving you driving tips on this channel. I don't feel qualified, to be honest. In theory, I know a few things, but when it comes down to it, I'm just not very good. I think this car was 20 million. It was a lot. But if you see it and you like classic cars, would recommend. I guess to be honest, if you're if you're not driving an H pattern shifter and you're not a Ford fan or an American car fan, I think the Ferraris marginally better. It's hard to describe how this car drives. When I say Ferrari, I mean the 330. I would say this car drives like a like almost a touring car class. It feels a little heavier. It's, it's, it's stable, but as you can see, it can get twitchy. Visibility is, I mean, great by modern standards, but the Ferrari does have even better visibility, in my opinion, as, as it's convertible, so you don't have to worry about the roof or these A pillars. This car's cool, though. This car's just cool. We got your old school fire extinguisher down there, I think. Sunburnt label on it. So there's a there's a bunch of cars in the uh, in this class, I would say. I have all the reviews on all of them. I'll give you my personal preferences, just in case you don't have all the time in the world to race and you want to know how they are. There you go. Good brakes. Um, most people have their aesthetic preferences but when you're talking about racing preferences if you're doing paddle shifters or automatics or racing on a controller this is not my thing I have found that trying to learn H pattern shifting and heel toe braking this has become my favorite stable only four gears easily wins races uh, they did modify the fuel if you haven't raced in a while or if you own it apparently one of the updates they made it so you can actually go four to five laps on a tank this used to be like an almost mandatory two-stop car on the 30-minute race at Le Mans the 700 pp one but now easily goes four laps a little bit of fuel saving you can stretch it to five not a problem so it has gotten better in that regard terrible terrible shifting it's awful really turn into a corner. So 
So I guess since we're here, if you're wondering about the name of Woman Driver, actually it doesn't come from racing games at all. It was early 2000s and we were all playing Halo. And in Halo, when you killed somebody, or when you were killed by somebody, it would say, you were killed by, and then it would have their name. I thought it would be hilarious if I put a crazy woman driver as my name. And so I did, and it was hilarious. But you can't put a crazy woman driver anymore, or at least not in this game, because it's too long. So I shortened it to a woman driver. Oh, here. And that's why my gamer name is a woman driver has nothing to do with driving at all. Oh, if you haven't figured out the, uh, the AI is on super easy, I don't want to risk losing races because I'm really just out here for the money. Um, racecraft is something I can learn later. Right now I just want to learn breaking points. And shifting. Driving. And I can do all that without anybody around. This corner coming up is one of the corners in the game where you just really love to have the VR. You can actually look through the corner. Even when you blow the entrance like I did, you, you can see where you're going or want to go. Still, I cannot nail this corner to save my life. I give it one out of a hundred, I'll get it, but I just slow, slow. Still have a lack of fuel left. Odds are I'm a minute ahead, but when you race with the controller in the HUD like that, you can see how far ahead you are, but. I cannot, so we're just going to put it in the lap. I need to practice anyhow, to be honest. There we go. Okay. That was terrible. As is expected. trail break one.
watch where I'm going. So as far as the final car review, I would say, uh, you know it's stable, can get a little twitchy in the wet, good brakes, strong motor, definitely fast on the straightaway. Put on fuel map six, you have all the fuel in the world. Fuel map one is a totally different animal, by the way. I would show you that, but I would just end up wrecking, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I have to say though, for the money, if you're looking at just grinding, them off for money and this is not a car you feel strongly about I would say there are better cars by race not necessarily better if you're doing H pattern shifting like I'm trying to learn the four speed transmission super wide ratio of gears that is just a lifesaver when it comes to this but if you're paddle shifting, don't have the H pattern shifter, or if you're sequential shifting, there are there are better there are better cars for the money in my opinion. So I guess that's my review of this car. If you love Fords, if you love the GT40, buy it. You won't be disappointed. If you're using H pattern shifting, buy it. Great place to start. You need one downshift for that corner, not two. And then one more downshift for this corner not two more. You stay in second gear, and then you only have one downshift into this corner, not two. And with H pattern shifting, that's just so, oh, low. That's just so much better than going six to fourth to second, to back up to third, to back down to first. Like, just makes it easier. I'm in the fuel curve. Like this one, fourth gear, third gear, hard on the brakes, tons of. And then you go over here and just you just stay in third the whole time. There's no pressure. Like I said, I'm not giving you driving tips. I'm not sure this is the fastest way around this track. But if you're just grinding for money and having a good time, this will work. fitting end. And if that didn't make you sick, you can definitely handle VR. And if that did make you sick, you can probably still handle VR. Just close your eyes when that happens. The end result wouldn't be much worse or different than my end result. I still just gonna spin out. So maybe I'll do another car review. Well, there we go. Terrible last lap. Check your flag in the race. In the Mark IV race car, 1967. Oh, lap up on everybody. Ah, 4.30, best lap. How terrible. But, 825,000, clean race bonus. And that's the car. It is gorgeous. Oh, race on fuel map 6, by the way, if you want to go more than three laps. That's just such a good looking car.
do want to give credit to the the guys I grabbed the liveries from. The suit livery was which one was it? Oh, it's the old one, right? Yep. Suit livery was by X Patrick X123. I'm sorry, that was the helmet livery. The suit livery was by the same guy, X Patrick X123. The car livery was by Fast Eddie. So there you have it. That's what I was racing. Probably my favorite livery for this car. I also like the Miller livery, which I'm sure you'll see at some point if you watch this at all. But there you go. Anyhow, I guess that does it for this one. Thanks for joining me, and you guys have a great day.